Hello and welcome. I've recently written a Python to desync cross compiler and I wanted to share it with you. This intro video shows what it is, how to use it, and follow up videos will go into depth on how it works. I built it primarily as an educational tool, so whether you're a gamer or a coder or both, I hope this is useful to you. If you haven't played, desynced is a base building factory game where you can program unit behavior in a custom visual programming language. Most of my units have custom behavior, and to help me write them more effectively, I started taking notes in Python pseudocode. And that's when an evil voice in my head asked the innocent sounding question, why don't you just write a cross compiler? Why have all that fun playing a game when you could be writing a cross compiler? Besides, look how easy it is. You just take some Python code, here we go, and you just say, turn it into desynced code, control enter, take this gobbledygook, bring it over to desynced, pull a unit open, open its behavior editor, scroll down, paste it in, and boom, Python code running in desynced. So how did we get here? I'll admit it's a bit of a yak shave, but again, I hope it's an educational yak shave. I got to spend three weeks relearning regular expressions and relearning why regular expressions are never the correct answer. I got to take a brief glimpse into three new programming languages that I hadn't ever worked with. I learned how to do some visualization and Really, the most important part is I finally learned the real use of abstract syntax trees. Now, before I go any farther, it would be completely remiss of me if I didn't mention that there's already a much better solution already available in the form of desyncedbehavioreditor.web.app from the people that contribute over at the desynced tools GitHub repository here. This is based on TypeScript, not on Python, but it is much more full featured and it's working. And if the only thing you want to do is have cross compilation of any language into desynced, this is where you should go. I really appreciate all the help that those guys have given me while writing my own compiler. Now to run the Python version, the easiest way to do that is to open up the GitHub link and either download it to your own machine or to launch Binder. Binder is an environment that allows you to run a Python notebook online without setting it up on your own machine. This allows you to play around with it very quickly, but it has the downside of having no permanence of its own. Now that you have the environment up and running, take a moment to familiarize yourself with Jupyter if you haven't already. It's based on cells of Python code. To run one, select it, and then press Control enter Note that this becomes a 1, indicating that it's the first cell to be run since the kernel has been initialized. If you run it again, now it's the second cell that's been run. Whenever you use this particular workbook, this first cell initializes everything that the rest of the workbook depends on, so make sure you run it first. As we walk through the workbook, it first lists out a high-level overview of each of the steps necessary for the compilation process. I'm going to go into a deep dive for each of these later, but the interesting part of this workbook structure is that for each one of them, you can edit it yourself and change how the compiler works. So for example, in this function that shows how to replace all of the add, subtract, math functions with calls, Here's the code that invokes that. And then right underneath it is a piece of code that tests it out. And so if we run that, we have all the debug information about how that process happened. If you'd like to add a feature to it, simply scroll up, make the modifications here, and try again. Let's take a quick look at the process and some of its debugging tools. Here we have a very simple piece of source code. It's just A equals the sum of B, C, D, and 3. And if I run this cell, it's going to parse it into an AST tree. 
and then it's going to provide some debugging information. AST print creates this hierarchical view here. AST render produces that same thing in a graphical format. And from here, it's much easier to see that it, how it's chosen to do order of operations. B plus C, then that result is added to D, and that result is added to 3. And then finally, it's unparsed back into Python source code. Now, you'll notice that it's almost identical, right? We haven't done any real work yet on the source code to move it towards desynced. And so all we've done is lost our original specific syntax. For some industrial strength debugging, go down to the bottom here and pick one of the example codes. Replace Python to desynced with Python to desynced detailed and give that a run. And that'll show the results of each of the steps as it's originally parsed into a tree. After we've done our operation replacement, call flattening, replaced all of our calls with calls to DS call, labeled the tree, performed flow control, translated to a desynced object, which looks an awful lot like a JSON file, and finally, base 62 encode that so that desynced can pull it directly in. So from here, what's next? Well, if you're interested in programming desynced with Python, go ahead and start using the compiler as is. If you're interested in improving and expanding its feature set, join me at the GitHub. There's a lengthy to-do list there. And if you're interested in the details of compilation and abstract syntax trees, please look forward to my upcoming video series explaining in full detail how to do it not just for desynced, but for other applications as well. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you for watching.